Today, the committee continues its critical work to improve our public health systems, advance access to care, enhance the capacity, quality, and integrity of our country's biomedical research system. And we'll discuss 11 bills that collectively address critical aspects of these public health issues. Already this year, we passed legislation to reauthorize the Food and Drug Administration's user fees and to enhance its ability to bring safe and effective treatments and devices to market. We've authorized uh, ARPA, the Advanced, ARPA-H, the Advanced Research Projects Agency for Health, to transform how we detect, treat, and cure the deadliest diseases affecting Americans. And last week, the House overwhelmingly passed bipartisan legislation to respond to the mental health and drug overdose crisis, and our bipartisan work to improve the health of all Americans continues today. So we have four bills that address the health needs of our rural and underserved communities. One bill would allow federally qualified health centers to use new access point grants for establishing mobile health units in order to increase access to health care in rural and underserved areas. Other bills will establish a task force to study barriers to the adoption of telehealth technology in rural areas, promote positive healthy behaviors and outcomes for populations in medically underserved communities through the use of community health workers, and reauthorize grants for trauma care to support the improvement of emergency medical services and trauma care readiness and coordination again, particularly in rural areas. We'll also examine legislation that would continue to fund the IMPROVE initiative through the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of, health, of Child Health and Human Development. This initiative reflects our shared bipartisan interest in improving maternal health by advancing research that reduces maternal mortality and morbidity, addresses disparities in maternal health outcomes, and improves health for pregnant and postpartum women before, during, and after pregnancy. And we have legislation that will support and expand research and awareness of uterine fibroids, a condition uh, that impa impacts as many as 80% of women. Now, shortcomings in clinical trial diversity have created knowledge gaps in our understanding of diseases, conditions, treatments, and prevention. And these gaps impact healthcare decision making, risk reduction, uh, knowledge of treatment outcomes, and the development of interventions and medications. So, We'll also discuss bipartisan legislation that will address these shortcomings by supporting an increasing diversity in NIH-funded clinical trials. Another bipartisan bill supports pediatric research awards for early career pediatric researchers and prioritizes researchers who've been historically underrepresented in the field of pediatric medical research. And we have three bills focused on security in biomedical research as we look to secure the integrity of our research enterprise, we have to do so in a way that does not impede global collaboration and scientific discovery. But many of us will agree that the United States cannot and will not remain a leader in medical research without attracting the brightest minds across the world and working with the best institutions. And we can both protect our national interests and remain a world leader in biomedical research, in my opinion. And I look forward to working with my Republican colleagues on these bills. So, so the witnesses, thank you for joining us. Uh, a bunch of bills, but these are all very important, and I appreciate uh, Chairwoman Eshoo, um the fact that we're having this legislative hearing today, and then can move these because they are bipartisan. So I yield back. Thank you.